Guild Watch 2, what can I say? It's just good, and it's making a huge, huge comeback. Guild Wars 2 is a high fantasy MMORPG with large open world maps, a hybrid combat system, unique mount system, and horizontal progression featuring both PvP and PvE content that was initially released back in 2012. Guild Watch 2 is very much just horizontal progression, by the way. And that means that anything you do in this game is gonna be saved and it's gonna amount to your total power, which is, by the way, amazing, needless to say. Recently, the game has just released its fourth expansion, Secrets of the Obscure, which Ooh. has come only 18 months since the previous expansion, End of Dragons. Secrets of the Obscure brings with it two new aerial maps which you'll be able to explore on your sky scale mount, which has new flight masteries that you'll unlock as you progress through the content. You'll face- Yeah, if you if you think World of Warcraft's dragon flying was pretty decent and pretty fun, they stole it from Guild Watch too. No, seriously, this game has had dra dragon riding forever. New enemies in the form of Cryptus, which are entering Tyria through reality rifts, which players will need to seek out and close for rewards. A new reward system has been added in the form of the Wizard's Vault, which basically gives you currency for completing daily and weekly tasks as well as achievements. Okay. Two new 10 player strike missions have been added, a new 5 player fractal dungeon, and probably the biggest Big. change when it comes to classes is that elite specialization specific weapons are. By the way, one of the biggest things about Guild Wars is a lot of people who played this game had one big complaint about it, because they played it a lot, and that is the fact that there were big content droughts. If you're a new player coming to this, don't worry, you're gonna have multiple years of farming to do if you wanna unlock everything, find everything, and do everything, because this is a very much do everything at some point type of game, honestly, because of its horizontal progression system, but... What the developers of Guild War 2 have said now is that they are going to make the expansions slightly smaller, but release them more frequently. Which means, you know, even if you do everything, there's not going to be huge content droughts, which is a very nice thing. Are no longer tied to a single elite spec, which means there's much more flexibility when it comes to build creation. Previously, if you wanted to use a great sword as a necromancer, you'd need to play the Reaper Elite spec, but mm. now that's no longer the case. In this video, I'll revisit Guild Wars 2 for a bit to see if the new expansion is interesting enough for me to want to stick around and play more. But first, today's sponsor, AFK Journey. A brand new game under the AFK IP revolutionizes card games with its casual open world. Yeah, this is absolute trash. Do not play it. Absolutely 100% ignore it without question. It's just, it's just garbage. In 2023, it doesn't feel long ago since I last covered this game as the End of Dragons expansion was only like a year and a half ago. But already- Pro tip, as you can see, he has only humans. That's the same that you should be doing. Because there, there is sadly, sadly, no race change in this game, okay? You're, you're stuck. And you probably don't want to be stuck with an ugly character. Thankfully, leveling is pretty fast on one hand, but you know, still. Already, the game has another new expansion, Secrets of the Obscure. So the last time I was playing this game, I was clearly doing nice. a good bit of transmog. Here's all my nice. characters looking pretty good. Obviously gone with a, a similar theme. I think the last time I was playing this game in my spare time, I was doing Tempest PvP. And I think I decided this character was my new main, whereas in the past, the warrior was my main. Let's jump back into it. Here we are hanging. With warrior, he means guardian, which is a super popular class, by the way, because it kind of has, you know, it, it does a lot. It has decent damage, good survivability. It can heal, it can do, well, everyone can heal in this game out in Lion's Arch. I love how my character looks. The big swooping cape, the giant book hammer. I'm really quite satisfied with uh, with my fashion game. I open up my inventory and I'm instantly overwhelmed. Random chests. Can't remember what I was really doing the last time I was playing this game. Probably world vs world, probably SPVP. That's what I usually do when I play Guild Wars 2 in my spare time. But it has hmm. been quite a while and I'm probably gonna have to relearn how to play my class. Here we are at the Silver Oh, he's an elementalist. Dummies. I just noticed now. Oh, elementalist is 
the essential mage kind of the game. Well, yeah, pretty much the mage kind of this game. But it's not really popular because it's pretty complicated. It is, it, it is relatively complicated, okay? You see this? You see this right here? Yeah, you have four elements. Four elements to switch in between. It's, it's pretty much something, you know? Let's open up Meta Battle and try and learn my class again. Catalyst Power DPS. How many abilities is this rotation? Jeez. Looking up at This must be a complicated class. It's like a 25 button rotation. Going through all of the elements, then you end up at fire and it's slightly different. Get learning, I guess. So, open with this, into this, into this, 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 switch to air. C, X, E, Jade no. Sphere, Water, C, F11, 2, X, V, E, this one, uh, this one, back to 5. Yeah, you see why people don't choose to play the mage a lot? Yeah, that's why. It's pretty complex. Yeah, uh, okay. I think I've got it. I had to make a little document to uh, learn my rotation. Let's begin the secrets of the obscure. Seriously, on this character, I have never gone to Divinity's Reach. That's the annoying thing about Guild Wars 2. Like, it's such an alt nice. friendly game when it comes to leveling your alts to max level, but map completion isn't shared whatsoever across any of your alts, and I really wish it was. All of my map completion is- The reason map progression is not shared between alts because there's the reason to do map progression on every character. My warrior, but I've re-rolled away from my warrior. So if I was to want to have that map completion, again, I I'd have to do it on my uh, on my mage, which I don't want to do. Bunch of other players hanging out here. I guess they're all about to start this quest line as well, since the expansion has only just dropped. Check out some mogs. This guy looks pretty cool. Got the legendary great sword. Also looking good. Everything's matching. Mm, matching nice. with the blue hair as well. Just looks like a full set. The Cringe. Hell that? Cat girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm nice, always down nice, for cat nice. girls, even though it's a very like basic outfit. You've done I'm good okay with, with what that. you've got. I can respect that. Let's begin. Surely this is going to be the last Guild Wars 2 expansion before they make Guild Wars 3. Surely. Comms upgrade. Test out Tammy's device. I suppose we'll call Tammy. Looks like we've just invented mobile phones. My character hasn't even unlocked the Kessex Hills. Mate, the struggles of playing on a new character. It's not even a new character. It's an old character that I just haven't done any map completion on. Other Guild Wars 2 players don't seem to complain about this at all, though, so it's probably just a me problem. Everyone else is probably happy to do map oh, completion on Oh man, each that's a good raptor mount. He's jumping way further than me. Yeah, they've got more patience than me. Okay, we need to sneak into the camp. There's little telegraphs to avoid. Yeah, little stealth mission. All right, so we need to interact with a bunch of objects and avoid the guards. I'm hiding in the bush. You can't see me. Try grabbing the crate of supplies. Oh, we've got some kind of mage costume on. I look like a Final Fantasy XIV character right now. True. Okay, we've discovered all the information. Disgusting. If only my character could just AOE all of these down. That'd be hilarious. Follow them. Okay. So now I can just run amongst them, no problem. They don't care about me being detected now, do they? Oh, what's this? The Eye of Sauron. Demons have popped out. Okay. Defeat the demon. Am I on my own here? I suppose I am. Okay, let's go. Big damage. Finish it. GG. We've just been knocked to Africa. Oh, we're getting sucked into the portal. Okay, mm. hell breaks loose. Are we, are we going to Question hell? Marks. I actually know nothing about this expansion, so if this is a demon-themed expansion... I didn't even know that there is a new expansion out, honestly. But, well, it's, it's kind of impressive, kind of interesting. Uh, the storylines... The storylines are really good in Guild Wars. A lot of people like them. But, you know... Oh, also, I should probably mention this. Guild Wars 2, free to play. But you need to buy the expansions to experience the story and other types of things. So, you know, uh, not not that free if you think about it. But it is technically free to play. Expansion, that would be technically. cool. Technically. And now we've been transported to Diablo 4. This looks like the final level where you go to fight Lilith. Hostile environment. You've entered an unknown realm with poisonous aura that negatively affects your energy levels and movement speed. It'll get worse over time. Interesting. Glider. Yeah, this actually looks like the platform where you fight Lilith at the end of Diablo 4. Guild Wars 2x Diablo collab. There's clearly going to be a boss fight right here, though. Like, look at this perfect boss fight platform. Hello there. Oh, hello. Yeah, literally fighting Diablo. 
That's a cool looking character. Defend yourself. I'll try. Oh my God, I can't even dodge. I'm sure you're supposed to die. 100% you're supposed to die. Oh, I was going to say he died. Huh. Oh, yeah, this is the death mechanic. Uh, if, you, if you kill someone by, by spamming Q, you second win. Congratulations. And this teleports you, this bandages you, which also, by the way, makes you survive. <laughs> it can help if someone's rezzing you. And it's pretty decent, and I have no idea what his steel does. We'll heal to full. He's allowing me to do so. Okay, oh. Oh. and now he wants to resume oh. fighting me. <laughs> is he what just... the fuck is this boss fight? You've got, like, no stamina bar, so you can't dodge things. You can dodge once, and then that's it. Mate, just finish me if you're going to finish me. Am I supposed to fight him or something? Just keep dying over and over. I think this is supposed to happen. Is it? Okay, it is. All of that was supposed to happen. Right. I guess we're supposed to hide. Mate, why didn't he just rip my bloody head off? You can't see me. Do Wait, see so me? what? I mean, that's a bit strange. Also, yeah, if you see this icon on the map, go there, but you're gonna probably get killed. Yeah, uh, these things are group events usually so you're not gonna deal good with if you're alone there and the fun thing is is you can do a quest line and the world is not alive alive but certain things that happen in the world can change how the world functions well not how it functions but how it looks on uh it can create new quests it can create new storylines and things like that it's not so huge it's not so dyna uh, dynamic you know, I'm not trying to oversell it. It's it, it's not Chad GPT is rewriting the uh, world every week or anything. Which is, by the way, the future of gaming if you haven't been paying attention. But, you know, it's decent enough. And some, it's funny. Because some quest lines that you do in this game... By the way, you don't need... There's, they're not typical quests also. Lead to you spawning these bosses. And man, I, I gotta tell you. There, there have been quite a few times where I spawn a boss like this and I'm the only one in this location at the time and I'm like, ah, I guess I'll die dead. <laughs> Balls of stealth. It's a bit scuffed, not gonna lie. Just run straight to the portal. Is that the play? No, I'll hide here. Let's just go over here. Oh! You can't see. It's the hardest boss Very in the much entire can game. See All right, just beeline. Speed! Dodge! It's the worst. I think he's bugged. Okay. Okay, we got this. What a scuffed, scuffed section of the game. Heart of the Obscure unlocked. So now I've got a new mastery system. Okay. Our current object of immense power enabling the user to interact with rifts between Tyria and other realms within the mists. Cool. Makes sense. So it seems like there's less masteries this expansion. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention one thing. Yeah, you see the part here that, you know, he had all these uh, skills that he has effectively... Seemingly, what is 25 plus 5 skills? Do not be fooled. He has a weapon swap. <laughs> which, which makes him have even more skills. Effectively, he has 45 skills, baby. That's good stuff, eh? Yeah, so... I'm not a lot of people choose to play this class because it's just complicated. And it's very, very not typical to what you expect. Only the Necromancer is pretty much what you would expect from a Necromancer. Even the Rogue is not what you would expect from a Rogue. Compared to End of Dragons and the other ones, there's still quite a few. The graphics on Guild Wars 2 are starting to look a little bit out of date, like... The textures true. and the lighting in these true, kind of areas. True, true. The game is certainly starting to show its age in uh, in 2023. The visual. It's true, but you get used to it so fast, and it doesn't matter. On this area, for example, looking quite old. I really do believe it is time for Guild Wars 3. True. I think Guild Wars 3 would be pretty huge. Anyone who's ever tried Guild Wars 2 is realistically going to try it. It's a cool looking area. This reminds me of the uh, Mists, Edge of Mists, World vs. World map. Arena Net presents Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure. A little bit scuffed that the NPCs are talking in the background. Of that. Usually, if you're gonna have like a title screen on the prologue of an expansion, you can have like a bunch of build up, epic music. It's usually at the end of an epic moment. Whereas this one was just randomly placed in the middle of a quest 
with NPCs talking in the background, no climax whatsoever, text placed over some random floating island. It felt <laughs> a bit low budget. Here's where the game introduced Rifts, a new open world event for this expansion. Essentially press a button to locate the rift, travel to it on your sky scale, kill a bunch of mobs until a boss spawns, seal the rift and get a bunch of rewards. I mean, anyone who expected anything else clearly does not understand anything. At this point I decided to take a break from the MSQ to explore the new map and attempt map completion. One thing I noticed right away was how diverse the biome is for the first map. You've got floaty islands with dinosaurs, a futuristic city, a snowy area, and a massive- There's a chainsaw outside. Can't do anything, huh? ...island with a wizard's tower. Aside from the Wizard's Tower, Secrets of the Obscure also comes with a new UI element called the Wizard's Vault, which looks like a battle pass at first glance, but it's not monetized. Sounds like finally Guild Wars 2 stole something from World of Warcraft because they had the vault in Shadowlands, and everyone hated it, so why steal the worst part of the game? And it gives various rewards by completing daily and weekly tasks in both PvE and PvP, which seems like a net positive and an additional thing for players to work through for extra rewards. Right, we'll hey, any kind of extra thing that you added to the game that adds something is gonna be pretty good and pretty fun. So, you know, it's not a bad thing. It doesn't even matter if you don't want to do the system, as long as it's there, it's technically a uh, win. Some more of the story. It's got like 10 NPCs all talking over each other. What a headache. The wizards created various reflections. Mate, NPCs How did they fuck up, please. this up? Tell me what to kill. Okay, let's find the next rift. Use our device. Next one's over here. I think I can see it in the distance. At least the game feels like an MMO. There's Pretty plenty of other cool, players running around doing these events with me. Oh, Those yeah. Rifts. One of the big things about um, Guild Watch 2 is the fact that you're going you're gonna to be level 1 and you're going to see max levels just running around the level 1 zone doing the quests, doing the things because of the separate character completion thing. It always feels alive. You can always find a lot of people in big events. It's kind of cool. Now we can continue with the MSQ. Simple stool unlocked. What? New expansion feature. Equipable chairs. Is it in mounts? Chairs. <laughs> oh, there's all these cosmetic chairs. Bro, that's now. pretty badass, not gonna by lie. Internet. Another form of cosmetic to flog on the cash shop. Equipable chairs. 400 IQ monetization. You can have a turtle chair if you want. Not only do you now need a mount skin to match your fashion game, you also need a chair to match your fashion. You can't have the default stool, because if your character sits on this, everyone knows that you're broke. If you go on an e-date with a girl in Guild Wars 2 and you whip this bad boy- If you go on an e-date with a girl, you pro she's already down whatever the, the chair size is. Yeah, she knows you're broke, and she's just not gonna hit you up in the DMs again. It's over. You have to at least spend some money on a decent chair. They've added a bunch of new stuff. This whole novelties tab seems to be new. So now you can equip chairs, musical instruments. It's pretty interesting because when I put the headphones on, I can barely hear the sound of the chainsaw. Uh, one of my uh, neighbor's trees fell a month ago. And yeah, it seems like this is the day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it makes sense. What are you gonna do? Not remove the the tree that fell? It fell on the fucking road, by the way. <laughs> but it's fine because no one cares about that road. But you know, still, still, I mean, how much can you even hear it? I'm looking at the volume. I don't think you can even hear it. Huh. Held items, toys, permanent tonics. The Guild Wars 2 fashion and collection game has certainly gone up a notch. Let's get off my brokey boy chair and get back to the action. This person's character looks super nice. cool. Nice. How have they got that purple outline? This person's character looks Good like a question. god. 10 out of 10 fashion. Now we've teleported somewhere else. Now we're gonna have to fight Dagda. And I'm already like almost dead from like, I have no idea what. I mean, do you have healing? I've just got like no survivability and I don't understand why. The fight with 
No, he's just probably bad. Again, hard class. Agda had me confused. This is one of the least popular classes, even though it's technically the only mage mage class in the game. Because it's hard. For whatever reason, I felt like I was lacking sustain or I overlooked a special mechanic. But for whatever reason, I was taking tons of damage. I died a few times, but the game allowed me to just body throw until the boss was dead. I think my build isn't optimized for difficult solo bosses, or I was caught off guard by the random difficulty increase, no considering I hadn't really struggled with any other mobs up to that point. At this point, I got bored of following NPCs around and listening to them talk to each other, as well as going through the same map completion MSQ mastery farm formula that the game's had for the past decade. So I decided it was time to remind myself why I actually do like Guild Wars 2, oh and I boy. queued for some SPVP. Oh, so he's playing just PvP, not uh, World vs. World, okay. Queue for some PvP, see if it's still fun. It used to be fun. Average queue time, two minutes. I mean, uh. I'm playing at like peak EU time right now. Oh, we got- What does peak EU time, I wonder, mean for him? I is it the night or something like that? Again, four minute queue. Skyhammer. All right, let's see if I can remember how to play Tempest. I also just screwed up my volume for my thing, but that's fine. That's fine. Basically, stay around your team and pop boons on them. Let's do it, team. Hold on to your points. Seize theirs. Pop some heals for the team. Knock this person down. Okay. This. Nice. Put some lightning out. Back into this mode. Pop this down. Yeah, people have been telling me that there's an option to turn off these parts because, well, you can't understand anything that's happening here, right? At least that should be the thing. I can't tell how much the voice... I can't tell how much too much is my voice at the moment, but that's fine. Got some stability. Heals. It kills on the team. I think we're doing okay. Well, I'm not even looking at the score. What, what, what team even are we? The red team. We're, we are actually winning. That's good. True. Let's go down here with the res. Big heals. By the way, you can PvP in this game from level 1. Uh, it will uh, equalize all of your items, all of your stats in a viable way, by the way. Unless it's world vs. world. But in 1 vs. 1, it will equalize all your stats, all of your things in a viable, reasonable way. Big heals. Ah, not quite. You know, it's not gonna be uh, like in other games where Oh, you can jump into the max level PvP combat anytime you want! And then you're like a level 20 and a max level 60 and it equalizes you out. But the reality is the moment you actually find anyone remotely close to having uh, a any a late, late game end game gear, even from dungeons, they just one-shot you like you don't even exist. With the zaps. Gonna die here. Let's, uh, let's escape. Jump. Dodge! Jump. Missed form. Get out. He had dodge. And oh, LG he got escapes. Out. Rock, rock thing. Invincibility. Dupes. Ah. Missed form. Can the team get off the res? Should be able to. There's the rally. How do we survive that? Oh, we kind of didn't. We can't. Come yeah. on. Get the res. Where's the healer? Yes. Big heals. Objective player. Big AoE. Lightning storm on these noobs. Just press every button, because why not? Finish it. I Sit. mean, it makes sense. And there's the win. Feels good. Oh, we, did, we did a lot what of What did he do? Personal total, eh? Um, yeah, that's a lot of healing, I guess. Uh, which was... Yeah, wait, no, wait, this guy sucks. <laughs> Uh, oh no! Wait. Say, oh, team versus team. Okay, so he, so his team did sixty percent, roughly. Interesting, I guess. If I'm reading this correctly, percent of team versus team. Of game seventeen, of team, oh, versus enemy. Hmm, a little bit complicated to understand it like this, but you know it's fine. Okay, so he did not do bad. I thought he actually did bad. <laughs> nah, nah, he did okay. He did okay. Healing. 300k healing. Did decent damage as well, I think. That was fun. Yeah, that's why I enjoy Guild Wars 2. The PvP. I needed that little reminder. The vast majority- Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. The PvP doesn't look good in my opinion. The majority of my hours in this game 
is either in SPVP it's fine, though, right? or in World vs. World, like doing massive fights. Like that will never stop being fun to me. So as much as I can't stand the whole story driven campaign okay. stuff, the PVP is always going to be fun. It's always going to be a reason to play for me anyway. I, I know that I'm in the minority there. Most people hate PVP and MMOs, but Guild Wars 2, very I think fun. Guild Wars 1 versus 1 PVP would be pretty good. Also accessible before even being max level for the most part. So let's see, do I have any World vs. World characters? Probably my Scourge. So right now I'm trying to rebuild my Scourge for World vs. World. So I'm going to buy one of these new relics. Just one more thing to add to your character. Okay, so now we're fully equipped. Right, I've got my World vs. World build. We should be good to go. Let's try and find... He just means a staff, by the way, for the Necromancer. World vs. World build means staff. Staff say we damage. The action. Here's my War Claw. As you can see, I swiped and bought a skin for it. Well, that's a crazy War Claw skin. Let's see if we can remember what to do. I'll put some AoEs down, try and do some damage, I guess. Let's do what I do best, put AoEs down. Getting those World vs. World rewards. Mm. What am I at now? World vs. World 170. Yeah, there's levels to this. Bare few talent points. It doesn't matter too much, but it's at least fun. Bend. Reduce the siege damage you take. That's probably useful. Quite a lot of useful things here. I'll take this one, Siege Bunker. So it's like. Oh, I didn't know there's talent points to that thing. Is that new? I wonder. Probably not. Little fight. Let's put some circles down, shall we? Weak. Without standing in circles, preferably. I'm gonna get the res. I'm gonna clutch me with the res. Are oh, you legends? Come on. There it is. Good job, team. You got some siege weaponry set up. Fun little skirmish we've got going on here. Big damn. It's it's pretty decent, but let me tell you how this actually re in reality works. You you use your staff because the staff is typically AOE, and you just cast overtime dot things on the ground <laughs> when everyone's running through these corridors. That that's kind of how the game actually functions. Damage. Oh, nuked. Wow. The ah, he's sand rating. Eh. Okay. Still some serious damage now. That's actually quite a fun little skirmish. Through the gate. Oh, he got it. Actually having a bit of fun here. We just got nuked by a bloody catapult. Can we can we live? Probably not for long. Okay, we, we run. This person's like naked. I've never seen fashion like that before. But what that... do you mean naked? That's exactly the amount of clothes a woman should always have on her if she's hot. If you're ugly, don't even go outside, okay? Do everyone a favor. It's really cool. That is one of the coolest outfits I think I've seen. I want to log on to one of my other characters. So this was this used to be my main. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I think he's doing a horrible job showing Guild Watch too. <laughs> but, but it is. It does look good. It does look fun, doesn't it? World character here, and then I've got this one, Healer Flames. I love how this character looks, though. I've got the giant harp. Big Yo, all of your characters look the same, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> His fashion sense is creatively bankrupt to oblivion and back. That's quite hilarious, Peon. The old pair of titties as well. Always enjoy playing on my dragon hunter. So after revisiting Guild Wars 2 for a bit, my pros and cons haven't really changed too much from the last time I played. Other than By the way, uh, every class has three ascendancies, I think. Yeah, three ascendancies. And you can swap between those ascendancies at any, at any, any point you want. You, you, you just have to have enough points farmed. And those are free to play things. And the addition of a few cons, as I've realized why I never really stick around with Guild Wars 2 for very long. Pros, decent combat, good storytelling, decent non-pay-to-win business model, very unique mount system, lots of evergreen content, solid mix of both PvP and PvE, alt-friendly game, epic meta event bosses, friendly community, great soundtrack, lots of horizontal progression, lots of completionist content, and a top-tier transmog and fashion endgame. Cons. Visually, I think Guild Wars 2 looks quite outdated nowadays. Oh. It's a difficult game to get into for new players. Due it's not difficult. It's not difficult because Guild Wars has no wrong decisions. That's what I don't think it's difficult. And you know, I said that the uh, I said that the mage is kind of a hard of a class. It's true. 
But if you want to start the game, the mage is not going to be that hard of a class. It's not like they instantaneously even give you the weapon swap. No, that's, that, that's like one hour in into the game they give you the weapon swap. And it's not like they give you access to all four elements instantaneously, they don't. Due to being so different to other MMOs, the game isn't fully open world which hurts immersion due to many loading screens. PvP seems to be an aspect of the game that's been ignored by the uh, Zones have loading screens in between them, which is completely not a problem in my honest opinion for a long time map completion it is obviously a drawback but it's not a problem it isn't account wide if it was i'd probably play the game more because i can't fully decide on a main so i just don't bother with it anymore the horizontal progression whilst can be considered a pro and a reason why so many people play guild wars 2 does result in the game not being very addictive and me personally quitting to play other mmos with more satisfying vertical progression too horizontal a problem? I guess that's true if you can't pick on what uh pick uh pick your goals in life. I guess that could be a downside. But all in all, I think it's better, you know. If you want some something like, you know, that uh, that feels like you're progressing, this game or runescape are great. Linked to character power. Now for the biggest issue I have with Guild Wars 2. With horizontal progression being a major focus of the game, there's a lot of different stat combinations, and often you'll run a different set of gear not only for each type of content, but for each build. If you're a PvX player, your bags yep. and bank are just going to be littered with gear, and this yep. is the biggest thing that makes me want to quit Guild Wars 2 every time I play the game. I log in, I look at my inventory, see it clogged up with mostly useless shit, and I'm instantly pissed off. What content do I want to do? World vs World? Okay, let's go over to Meta Battle and find a build. Oh wait, I don't have a gear set with those stats. Go to the trading post, buy a full set of gear plus runes. That sounds more like a you problem, not the game's problem though. If you want to be a meta slave and always do everything according to some kind of uh, niche uh, you know, guide that makes you 100% more powerful than anyone, and, and that in reality is barely 1% more powerful than the average player, That that's kind of on you, I feel. That's a you problem if you can only play games by uh, following guides and stuff. Plus sigils, the correct weapon, accessories, and now a relic. And I'm finally able to participate in my... The, the idea that anyone understands do they have the correct items, gear, or with everything in world in world is just laughable in my opinion. ...chosen content after dropping 50 to 100 gold. It's a massive barrier to entry for new players, and for existing players just to experiment with new types of content. Here's my suggestion. Literally remove gear from the game and allow players to just choose their stats and load out from a menu similar to what's already available in SPVP. Gear in Guild Wars 2 has felt meaningless for years and is nothing more than a barrier to entry as gear score and power doesn't increase with each expansion like a typical MMO. So when you get a piece of exotic or ascended gear in Guild Wars 2, you literally feel nothing. There's zero dopamine, you don't feel like you're getting stronger, it's just a set of alternate stats that might be useful for one of your builds at some point. You'll probably just throw it in the bank and forget about it. If Guild Wars 2 removed gear from the game and you could just... Again, implying that's a bad thing. That's a personal opinion, I feel like. Just build your character. Oh, it says hot take. Yeah, it is a pretty hot take because this is a personal opinion you wanted with no barriers, not only would it be the most alt-friendly MMORPG in the entire genre, but I think it would greatly improve the new player experience and help attract more players to the game. The entire sense of progression in Guild Wars 2 is already completionism, mastery, fashion collection, legendary crafting for the skins, and achievement hunting. For me, I think the devs- Well, I think that, that that's enough of the hot take. What is this? Oh! Wait, Peon, you need you need an outro screen. Well, I, gu I guess this is as good as it gets, but that was the lazy Peon. Good video. Anyway, this was Quizzer Sensei. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.